Okay, welcome back. We're going to keep working through that Python for DevOps book. We've only got a little bit of time today, but um, it all starts to add up. So let's uh, keep working on that. Now, last video, I tried doing some of the examples, but, but they didn't work. So we're just going to move on without getting those examples to work. I did um, make some progress, though, because they had a file path here that gave me a clue as to which file th this was meant to go in. They didn't make that clear in the book. But instead of moving to the folder, or not which, which file, which folder it was meant to go in, but instead of putting it in the folder where this file path would be valid, I just changed the file path and I put these files in the modules folder. All right, but let's continue reading the book. Uh, my goal is just to get through this book and get first exposure to some of these things, not necessarily to set it up, uh, especially not uh, perfectly uh, at this time. All right, provisioning a Route 53 DNS record. The next module was for the creation of a Route 53 DNS record for the main domain of the site www.devopsforall.dev. Create a directory called modules slash route 53 with two files, main.tf and variables.tf. Okay, but as far as that is concerned, we are going to do that because even though the code doesn't work, we get a more of a sense for what is actually in the code and why, even if it ends up failing. So to code along with this book, I'm just repurposing my lab that I'm using for my Cosmic Python series. Um, I'm just doing a new, a new folder that I'll probably delete after this. The main.tf file in the route 53 directory tells Terraform to create a route 53 DNS record of type A as an alias to the DNS name of the CloudFront endpoint. It uses several variables that are declared in variables.tf and whose values are passed to it by the caller of this module. got my terminal up now so let's change directory into where I've been working on this So this all looks familiar. Um, <clears throat> oops, it looks like there's a, a problem here. I think I didn't change directory properly. Yeah, so right now I'm in modules. So I've got a, uh, and I created a, yep, I opened the, the there's already a main.tf file here. So we need to make one in the route 53 directory.
All right, that looks good enough. Uh, this isn't. <coughs> this is Terraform code, not Python code, so white spaces don't matter in this. So we're just going to save it like that. Unless there's more, I got to check if there's more required. Nope, that's it for this file. Okay, next file is the variables file. Alright, here's all the variables. Add a reference to the Route 53 module in the main.tf terraform file. So that's going to be up one level here. Pass a zone ID, cloud front domain name, and cloud front zone ID as input variables to the Route 53 module. The value of the zone ID is declared in variables.tf in the current directory, while the other values are retrieved from the outputs of the CloudFront module. So we've got our provider AWS, we've got our module T3, and module A A uh, CM, but we'll need to make a new module named CloudFront. Oh. Actually, it looks like I, I skipped the CloudFront example. Um, I think that's going to be okay, um, I'm, but I'm not going to skip this Route 53. And uh, I'm in the modules directory already, so we're just going to go Route 53 here. All right, that looks good to me. Next is going to be the variables file in this folder here, the module. We need a new variable for, oh, it looks like uh, zone ID is the new variable. Okay, and then we've got a string here. I'm not sure what this is about, but I'll type it out exactly. The next three steps, which should be very familiar to you by now, are for the provisioning of the resources with Terraform. Terraform init, Terraform plan, and Terraform apply. Yep, and they're familiar to me, but unfortunately they're familiar um, because they haven't been working for me, but let's give it a shot. Okay, so this first one has been working. Hopefully we'll get a similar result. Oh, so we got a problem here. Um, an argument or block definition is required here. So it looks like I either skip. Yeah, so it looks like I have a. Ah, 
perfect. So it'll point out the the problem here. So it looks like I might have an extra parentheses or interpolation. Ah, or there might be some problem with this book is already out of date or something like that. That's okay. We'll just go to the next thing, Terraform plan, which of course is not going to not going to pass because of that. And then we'll do the last one, Terraform apply, just to get a sense for for how it would work if it would work, but it's not working. That's okay. We'll just move on. Next part is copying static files to S3 to test the provisioning of the static um, oops so got a bit of an issue again this is where I can't okay there we go now to test the provisioning of the static website from end to end create a simple file called index.html that includes a JPEG image and copy both files to the S3 bucket previously provisioned with Terraform Make sure that the AWS profile environment variable is set to a correct value already present in the um, .aws credentials file. So I don't have that file. Um, we can still try catting it out. So or or echoing it. Yep, so I don't have everything they have here, um, so I won't be able to do everything they can do. Visit HTTPS www.devopsforall.dev and verify that you see the JPEG image that was uploaded. So I would be able to, if, if I got this to work, I'd be able to upload a JPEG image to this site, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get this to work. Um, that's okay again, I, I hate to move on, but let's do it. Deleting all AWS resources provisioned with Terraform. Whenever you provision cloud resources, you need to be mindful of the cost associated with them. It is very easy to forget about them, and you may be surprised by the AWS bill you receive at the end of the month. Make sure to delete all the resources provisioned above. Remove these resources by running the terraform destroy command. One more thing to note is that the contents of the S3 bucket need to be removed before running terraform destroy because terraform will not delete a non-empty bucket. Note, before running the terraform destroy command, make sure you will not delete resources that might still be used in production. So this is kind of, I think, a little bit dishonest of this book. Um, they did, they were upfront with you saying that you do need to um, uh, destroy your resources because otherwise you'll get an unexpected bill. But they didn't actually walk you through destroying them, which to me is, is kind of strikes me as dishonest. It's almost like they're not um, really telling you how to do that, um, kind of hoping that you won't do this and, and we'll have a higher bill. Um, so I'm going to try it. Um, one thing I definitely recommend um, you do if you set this up is, is destroy these in a cron job so that they're automatically destroyed when you don't need them. Um, if you do that, um, then you don't have to remember uh, to, to destroy them. Um, or if something happens, um, car breaks down, something, and you can't destroy them, it just happens automatically. You don't even have to worry about it. All right. So let's try destroying these resources with the command terraform destroy.
Okay, so it looks like we would be destroying these variables here. So I, I guess that makes sense because a domain name. Um, so unfortunately, I don't know how to destroy things, and the book didn't uh, walk me through that. I think that's a little bit dishonest of the book um, because it's going to lead to bigger bills if you don't do that. Um, but um, I didn't get it to work anyway, so I guess I wouldn't be surprised if, if destroying doesn't work just because I could never set it up. So let's move on to the next section, automated infrastructure provisioning with Pulumi. Pulumi is one of the new kids on the block when it comes to infrastructure as code tools. The keyword here is new, which means it is still somewhat rough around the edges, especially in regards to Python support. Pulumi allows you to specify the desired state of your infrastructure by telling it which resources to provision using real programming languages. TypeScript was the first language supported by Pulumi, and nowadays Go and Python are also supported. It is important to understand the difference between running infrastructure and automation code in Python using Pulumi and an AWS automation library such as Butu. With Pulumi, your Python code describes the resources that you want to be provisioned. You are in effect creating the blueprint or the state discussed at the beginning of the chapter. This makes Pulumi smaller to, or sorry, similar to Terraform. But the big difference is that Pulumi gives you the full power of a programming language such as Python in terms of writing functions, loops, using variables, etc. You are not hampered by the use of a markup language such as Terraform's HCL. Pulumi combines the power of a declarative approach where you describe <coughs> the desired end state with the power of a real programming language. With an AWS automation library such as Butu, you both describe and provision individual AWS resources through the code you write. There is no overall blueprint or state. You need to keep track of the provisioned resources yourself and to orchestrate their creation and removal. This is the imperative and procedural approach for automation tools. You still get the advantage of writing Python code. To start using Pulumi, create a free account on their website, pulumi.io. Then you can install the Pulumi command line tool on your local machine. On a Macintosh, use Homebrew to install Pulumi. The first command to run locally is Pulumi login. All right, so I'm, I'm going to check it out. <coughs> I don't have high hopes, though. All right, this looks pretty good, but right here we can see pricing, so I'm not sure what I get just for a basic account. <laughs> ah, it looks like I get a lot of things. All right, sign up. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to be changing, I think, going forward is once I'm done with this book, I've got a few more books I want to get through, but I think I'm going to probably put books aside. Um, I just don't think books are um, super valuable. I don't know. I, it, it's hard. I, I've been keeping this self-learning methods, pros and cons. And um, I mean, with books, Amazon Kindle books anyway, I mean, the huge selection, like that's pretty important. Uh, 
All right, so there's Plumy. So, okay, so now you can install it. Um, so let's try the app to get install it. First, we'll do an update. And I'll go up two levels here. Okay, so I can't just apt get install it. Um, P U L U M I. All right, so I can't get, I can't get this to work. Oh no, they want to do a full section on this. Uh, let's see if I can get it with the software manager here. I want to play Wolfenstein. Nope, I don't see it. Let's see if I everything's up to date. Nope, there is no plumy. It doesn't exist. I think I'm spelling it right. P U L U M I. Yeah. Alright, but if I could get that installed, I would do this Pulumi login, and then the next step would be creating a new Pulumi Python project for AWS. Create a directory called proj1, run Pulumi new in that directory, and choose the AWS Python template. As part of the project creation, Pulumi asks for the name of a stack, call it staging. Please choose a template, AWS. Your new project is ready to go. To perform an initial deployment, run the following commands. Okay. Then run Plumi up. So, yeah, they want a virtual environment. I don't know what this dash P means. Though. Anyways, it is important to understand the difference between a Plumi project and a Plumi stack. A project is the code you write for specifying the desired state of the system, the resources you want Plumi to provision. A stack is a specific deployment of the project. For example, a stack can correspond to an environment, such as development, staging, or production. In the examples that follow, we will create two Plumi stacks, one called staging, that corresponds to a staging environment. And further down the line, another stack called prod that corresponds to a production environment. Here are the files automatically generated by the Plumi new command as part of the AWS Python template. Follow the instructions in the output of Plumi new and install virtual env. 
Then create a new virtual env environment and install the library specified in requirements.txt. Before, note, before provisioning any AWS services with Polymy Up, make sure you are using the AWS account that you are expecting to target. One way to specify the desired AWS account is to set the AWS profile environment variable in your current shell. In our case, the AWS profile called um, georgiu.net was already set up in the local AWS credentials file. So I'm skipping this as well. The main Dunder main file generated by Plumi as part of the AWS Python template is as follows. Clone the Pulumi examples GitHub repository locally, then copy main.py and the www directory from Pulumi examples AWS PY S3 folder into the current directory. Here is the new Dunder main file in the current directory. Note the use of Python variables for content DR and bucket name. The use of a for loop and also the use of a regular Python function, public read policy for bucket. It is refreshing to be able to use regular Python constructs in IAC programs, infrastructure as code. Now it's time to run Pulumi up to provision the resources specified in Dunder main. This command will show all the resources that will be created. Moving the current choice to yes will kick off the provisioning process. Lots of skipping, that's okay. As I said, I can't really see myself using Plumi. Um, but I hope to do less skipping um, when I go back to Mastering Python Networking. I'm planning to go back to that soon. Visit the URL specified in the website underscore URL output and make sure you can see the static site. In the sections that follow, the Pulumi project will be enhanced by specifying more AWS services to be provisioned. The goal is to have parity with the resources that were provisioned with Terraform. An ACM SSL certificate, certificate a CloudFront distribution, and a Route 53 DNS record for the site URL. All right, so this is where I'm going to stop. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.